first no more, huh? I don't know if I'll be able to answer these. Uh, let me see if I can get this to go. Orientation is locked. Rotate device back. Let's see if I can learn how to do this right. Hmm. Well, I want to show everybody this. Hey, George. Ah, so what have I got to do now? I've got the orientations locked. Rotate device back. Let's unlock it. Can you unlock it? Normal. Let's see how I can do it. I'm still learning, y'all. Please bear with me. Orientation is locked. It's upside down for you, yeah. So there goes my, the reason I wanted to do it that way. Well, here I am. Anybody see me? Tell me if you see me. Okay, see my Tech Talk Tuesday. Looking forward to this, Dad. Yeah, hey. Hello, yeah, Charlie, yep, I'm sorry it's not, uh, I guess I started it off with it straight up and down, and uh, I wanted to make it in a, um, what you call it, first time watching, thank you, yes, I see you, good, all right, it's the right way, okay, great, I'm going to sit down then, and I'm going to talk to you, I, I found this old degree wheel, Old APE degree wheel. It says it's the world's fastest motorcycle parts products. It's a good old degree wheel. And uh, I've traced it on the board. And I've got a couple notes I want to go over with you. I did a hypothetical, hypothetical degree wheel. I put down at 50 thou lift off the seat. And I'm going to take you over and show you what that looks like. Here's an old pro stock motorcycle head. This is one cylinder of a 640 cubic inch V8. Five and an eighth bore, 2.75 intake valve, 2.1 exhaust valve. And if I pick this up and the valve shuts, and you want to know what the valve timing is or the degrees duration, it would be, we check normally, we check at 50 thou lift, which is about right here. This is on the seat and we get 50 off the seat. So we start checking the duration. So the intake valve opens 50 thou off the seat. Then the crankshaft continues the rotation. The piston the, goes down, the valve opens to all the way to full lift. Piston stops at the bottom. It starts going back up on the compression stroke and this valve starts closing. And when it gets to the closing point at 50 thou off, it shuts. That's what 50 thou off the seat looks like. So when we go over here, I got these numbers I wrote down in a two valve, high performance, typical application. I wrote down, let me lay it down just enough where I can see what I'm saying. All right. I put down at 50 thou lift, we open the intake valve at 20 before top dead center, plus 180 degrees of the intake stroke, plus 60 degrees after bottom dead center, we close the valve. That gives us a 260 degree duration camshaft. On the degree wheel, when you're looking at it and you're opening the valve 20, 20 degrees before top, then we start rotating. We come all the way through. We go all the way. The crankshaft's turning. We go all the way to the bottom. And then we go 60 degrees after bottom. And that's when the intake valve closes. So let's turn this over so you can see how this lines up. Here. Let me get a marker. I'll mark where 60 is on this wheel that I'm going to be looking at. It's about right here. And I'm going to open the valve at 20 before top. 
So what I want to show you how this works, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why we need bigger valves. I'm going to say, yes, you need bigger valves, and I'm going to explain why. We open the valve here before TDC, and then this is a 180-degree intake stroke. And then we're going to close it at 60 degrees after. That, le that equals 260 degrees. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Stock eliminator, yep. Okay, here's the problem. We're not, we're not measuring, the engine doesn't see the duration at 50. That's where we measure it. That's where we measure it on here at 50. The engine sees the valve open at one thou lift or six thou lift is a good number. So if this, if this cam opened at 20 before top dead center at 50 lift, in reality at six thou or one thou lift, it started opening way over here. So we got to add that 20 degrees more ramp. That's where the, the valve starts to crack daylight, gets up to 50 thou lift, and then we add all the duration to it. So in reality, if we measure it opening at 20 thou before TDC at 50 lift, in reality, it's cracking daylight about 40 before top dead center. That's called the ramp. Okay, here's how it looks if you do six thou lift off the seat. You get 40 before TDC plus the normal 180 degrees of duration, and then you get 80 closing, which it was at 60, and now instead of closing at 60 after bottom, the closing ramp from 50 thou lift down to zero on the seat ends up adding about 20 more degrees. So this ends up with an, a reality of about a 300 degree intake camshaft. That means the seat, the valve is off the seat, 40 before, 180 for the stroke, 80 after, gives us 300 degrees of duration. Seat to seat, we can call that seat to seat. So I'm gonna show you a picture of what that looks like on this degree wheel that I drew, this make-believe degree wheel. Instead of opening at 20, before top dead center, and instead of closing at 60 after, this is 260 degrees of duration right here, from 50 lift to 50 back to the seat. In reality, it is, it opens 40 before, well, 20. It opens 20 degrees before that to go from zero lift to 50 lift. And in reality, it closes about 20 after Instead of closing at 60, it really closes at about 80. Instead of 60, it really closes at about 80. So seat to seat, we're gonna add this much duration to it. So our intake valve is open 300 degrees of the time. Now let's take the same idea and move it over to the exhaust lobe. The exhaust lobe on this two valve pro stock or two valve high RPM, two valve really powerful engine like this. Big engine, big RPM. But you can use, the numbers are relative. At 50 thou lift, we open it 80 before bottom plus 180 degrees of the exhaust stroke, and then we close it 30 after top, which gives us a 290 degree exhaust cam at 50 thou lift. You understand what I'm saying? Now take that same exhaust cam with six thou lift, and it opens reality instead of opening at 80 degrees. Let's show you where that is just so we can get the, get the numbers. Intake valve opens, it, the exhaust valve, sorry, opens at 80 before bottom at 50 lift. But in reality, at six thou lift, it really opens about 20 degrees sooner than that, which would be 80. So what does that give us? 100, 90 plus 10 more gives us 100. So 100 degrees before bottom, plus the 180 degrees of the exhaust stroke. And then instead of closing at 30 after top dead center, in reality, it really closes about 50 after top dead center. So now this, this uh, exhaust cam, it opens way over here before TDC, comes way around here, goes all the way to 180 degrees of the exhaust stroke, and then it closes way over here at 50 after top dead center. So that's 330 degrees of duration for the exhaust cam. Now, if you add these numbers together, this is what blows my mind. If you add these numbers together, 300 degrees of valve is off the seat on the intake cam with a 260 at 50. The exhaust cam is off the seat, the exhaust valve is off the seat 330 degrees with a 290 degree cam at 50. We only know 
of what they call 50 thou lift numbers. That's what everybody measures by, but, it, but the valve is off the seat. And let me show you one more time so you can understand why. I'm gonna hold this right here and I'm gonna shut this valve. When this valve gets to 50 thou off the seat, that's when they start counting intake valve opening. And then it goes to full lift and then it comes back to 50 from close. And that's when they stop counting the intake duration and then the valve shuts. But in reality, when this cracks daylight, about 20 degrees sooner than the opening measured at 50, and then it goes all the way to full lift and it comes back to 50 off the seat. And then when it goes shut, that's about 20 degrees later. So that takes this 260 degree intake and turns it into a 300 degree intake. That takes this 290 degree exhaust and turns it into a 330 exhaust. But I'll tell you what's really scary about that is when you add those numbers together, let's do it real quick. And my nose is running cause it's cold. 30 and 330, 300 plus 330 equals, I got jumpy, 300 plus 330 equals 630 degrees. Okay, so that means your valves are open 630 degrees. And the good Lord and the engine designers, they only give us two revolutions, which is 720 degrees. So what does that give us to do work? Well, let's break it down right quick. On this two valve engine, we close the intake valve at 80 after bottom. We close the intake valve at 80 after bottom. So once we close the intake valve on the seat shut, we start building compression before TDC. So we build compression all the way till the spark plug fires, which is 30. And if the spark plug fires, it fires during the compression stroke. So that shortens this up. That gives us 30 to 90. And that gives, how much does that give us? On compression, it gives us 30 plus 60 equals. That gives us 90 degrees. Not really. Yes, it does. I said it wrong. Please follow with me. Try my best. We, sh we go daylight shut at 80 after bottom, so that leaves 10 degrees of compression before 90, and then after 90, we only get 60. So that gives us a 60, 70 degrees compression ratio. Compression, we get 10. Let's see, we get 90 minus 30 equals, we get 60 and 10, we get 70 degrees. So we only get 70 degrees of duration. I mean, 70 degrees of compression. We get 70 degrees to compress. Everything we took 300 degrees to get in the engine, we get 70 degrees to compress it before the spark plug lights, which starts building pressure in the cylinder. Now on the power stroke, let's go over here and look one more time. Here's the power stroke. This is where we get to make the horsepower. There's no way you can make power on the power stroke until the piston goes to the top and turns around and goes back down. I don't care what your intake valve's doing, your exhaust valve's doing. There's no way you can build power unless both valves are shut and the spark plug has lit the mixture that comes in and once the piston turns around and goes back down, that's the only time you can start building pressure and that's at TDC. So from the time it goes till the exhaust valve opens and the exhaust valve opens at 100 degrees before the bottom. So we get 80 degrees of power. That leaves 80 degrees of power. We get 720. We get an intake stroke, which gives us 180. We get a compression stroke, which gives us 180. We get a power stroke, which gives us another 180. And then you get an exhaust stroke that gives us another 180. That all equals 720. But when you add up this 70 for compression and this 70 for power, and then you add up this 630 for the valves being open, it all adds up to a bad number. 630 plus 70 to compress it, 
plus 80 to turn the crankshaft. That equals 780 degrees, but we only got 720. So there's 60 degrees that's all mixed up in here. 60 degrees. And we only have that we only allotted 70 to squeeze it and 80 to make power. So this is why I'm saying we need bigger valves so we can make all these numbers smaller and we get more time to compress it and we get more time to make power. So let's move over to a four valve. Now, let me tell you about the four valve. The four valve has more valve per cubic inch. It has more valve per cubic inch. It has bigger intake valves, it has bigger exhaust valves, it has two intakes and two exhausts. And we take this whole 630 degrees and we turn it into 555 degrees. We take the intake and we open it at 10 plus 180 intake stroke. We close it at 40 after bottom gives us 230 on the intake. Or since it takes 15 thou opening ramp on a four valve and it takes 15 closing ramp on a four valve, we end up stretching that out to 260 degrees intake duration. So the intake valve is open 260 degrees seat to seat. The exhaust, I'm running through this faster since I explained it really slow on the two valve side. Exhaust valve opens at 74 bottom plus 180 of the exhaust stroke plus it closes at 15 after, which gives us a, a four valve racing camshaft exhaust duration of 265 and an intake uh, valve duration at 230, which is at 50 thou lift. Now go add the ramps and go to six thou lift where the 10 goes to 25, the 40 goes to 55. That gives us 260 degrees on that 230 goes to 260. All right, I said it wrong. The exhaust opens at 70. Uh, it goes 180 exhaust and closes at 15 after. It gives you 265 on the racing. I'm trying to say the red one is 50 thou lift on the intake, and the red one is 50 thou lift on the exhaust. This is where I added the ramp. Put 15 on the opening ramp, and I put 15 on the closing ramp. Gave us 295 and 260. You add those two numbers together, you get 555. So the intake valve and the exhaust valve is open 555 degrees, and we're going to still light it at 30 before TDC, and that's gonna change our compression. We're gonna be able to compress this thing 90, instead of 70, we're gonna be able to compress it up to 90 to 95 degrees. So we're gonna be able to squeeze it and make more bang out of it. And then on the power side, this is the fun part. We open the exhaust valve at 85 before top instead of 100 before top. So we're going to open the exhaust valve here and we're going to light it off here. So we're going to be able to get a full 90 plus 5. So we're going to be able to get 95 power stroke. We're going to pick up more power. We get 95 degrees of power to the crankshaft before we open the exhaust valve. And it's only because this, this four valve engine has way more exhaust valve than it does the two valve. So I'm going to hold this in my hand. We're valve limited on a two valve. That's why all four valves make more power than two valves. And if you don't think they do, I'm going to tell you that's because you don't know very many four valves that have a 5.1 bore and a four and a four inch stroke or all your pro stock, pro stock 500s out there that are racing. They are, um, let's see, they're 4720, 4730 bore, and they had a 3.5 stroke but they can only put whatever valve will fit in the bore, and their bore is 4.730, 4.725. That's the biggest bore that will fit on a 500 cubic inch pro stocker. But they have the biggest valve that will fit, biggest intake and biggest exhaust that will fit in that architecture, and it only allows them to build power for 80 degrees of the 720 that we're allowed, that we have to use. The four valve, on the other hand, we get way more intake valve, way more exhaust valve, so we shorten up the cam timing, and it gives us the opportunity to put 95 degrees of power into the crankshaft instead of 80 degrees of power in the crankshaft. And the only thing that's really different, not only thing, but one of the main things is, is we get more air in in less time. Look at this right here. 30 degrees less. Almost every four valve we've done that has big cubic inches gets... 30 degrees, we use less, 30 degrees less camshaft duration than the two valve. And on the exhaust side, we can get away with 260 degrees of exhaust versus over here, we need about 300 degrees. Now this engine right here, this two valve, this is really big. 
The ratio between this intake valve and this exhaust valve, like I said, this is a 2.73, this is a 2.1. If you do the math on that, let's do it. Because I see people all the time talking about that. Let's try it. Let's see if I can do 2.10 valve divided by 2.73 equals, that's almost 77%, whereas an LS or a small block Chevy, they're getting closer to 70%. This is like 77%. The fastest two valve pro stocker that we did on the four cylinder is we had a 48 to 50 millimeter intake and a 40 millimeter exhaust, which gave us about 85% intake to exhaust side, which allowed us to run really small camshafts on a two valve pro stocker because we had more valve, a lot more valve. So look, when, a guy, when I asked the guys at this expo, a week or two ago, hey, I said, have you ever tried a bigger exhaust, exhaust valve? And I heard so many times, y'all, it was painful. This is what I heard. It doesn't work. I said, what do you mean? He said, it doesn't work. I said, well, how do you know? Well, we tried it. And every time we put a bigger exhaust valve in, we lose power. Well, there's a lot to it. I made a little note so I might can remember it. I'll back. Orientate back. Am I right again? Or did I screw it up? <laughs> there we go. All right. Bigger is better. That's one rule that I always use on the valve size. And the uh, weight matters. You, you can't just put a big one in there because it fits. You got to worry about the weight too. And this is not a great valve here. It's big. It's the biggest it would fit, but I was worried about weight, so I had them carve all this out. Well, that um, messed up the strength, so stiffness was more important than weight, but I didn't know it back then. So I had a chance to go again. I'd make this a heavier valve so it would be more stout, so I could control the valve seat at the right time without this valve flexing or oil canning. Also, I wanted to say that when you're building an engine to make more power, Area matters, area, area, area. So I did a deal where I want, I want to make sure I say this right. And you come up with TDC with a calculator. I don't know what that means, but no, you, I, do, I do where the piston comes to the top and stops. And if I want to know exactly, I put a, a, deg uh, a piston stop in there and I roll this over till it stops and then I put, if it stops at 10 before, then I turn the crankshaft backwards until it stops at 10 again. And this is where it bumped when I was on my way up. I turned it all the way back around, it bumped here again, then TDC is in between the two bumps. That's how I check TDC. Um, but I wanted to say, the, if you go back in time and you look at the fastest engines, the ones that make the most power, and the ones that set the records, they have the biggest bore that they can fit. If they have a cubic inch rule, they go down on the stroke, they go up on the bore, and the reason they go up on the bore is so they can put a bigger valve in it. And my big problem that I see happen over the years is we've gone bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger on the intake and smaller and smaller and smaller on the exhaust, and we make the exhaust tiny so we can put a big intake in. And don't ever think that George Bryce is telling you you need a bigger exhaust valve than intake. Never, never, never would I say that because we have atmosphere putting air in fuel, air and fuel in the engine, and we have combustion pressure of the um, the, the explosion made by the bomb with the air and fuel squeezing it only a few degrees and lighting it at 30 degrees before top dead center makes a bomb go off. And when the exhaust valve opens, that pressure goes out under huge pressure. So we need a smaller exhaust valve than we need intake valve. But look, go through history and listen to this close, you guys. If you go and look at really fast engines, we have more rocker ratio on the exhaust side. I'm not talking about a street engine or anything. I'm talking about, like, if you go pro stock and you have 1.8 on the intake, you might have 1.9 on the exhaust. If you have 2 to 1 on the intake, you might have 2.10 on the exhaust. We're trying to put more ratio in the exhaust side. We also may have more lift. I've seen really, really fast engines that have a 1.200 lift on the exhaust and a 1.100 lift on the intake. They get the most they can in there. And the reason we were trying to put 320 degrees of duration at 50, this is only 
This is only uh, 290 degrees at 50. There are pro stock car engines out there that are running 300, 315, 320 degrees at 50 lift. And if you put the ramps on before and after, this camshaft here, their exhaust cam on a pro stock car has over 360 degrees of open time on the exhaust valve. 360 degrees. You only get two of those in the whole, the whole four cycle engine. We get one to get intake and exhaust in. We get one to do power and compression. That's it. We get two turns. And if they're on a pro stock car, they're putting one full revolution of the crankshaft in just to get the exhaust out. They're opening the valve, running at a full 360 and closing the valve. That's because the valve is too small. Now, when they weigh it out, they put it on the flow bench. And a bigger intake valve always flows more, so of course it's going to get more air in the engine. But my point is, is we shouldn't continue sacrificing the exhaust valve smaller and smaller and smaller so we can get a bigger and bigger intake valve. There is a point of diminishing return. And when a guy says, I put a bigger exhaust valve in and it doesn't work, well, let me ask you this. Did you put less camshaft in it? Did you open the valve for a shorter period of time? Did you open it later? Did you close it sooner? Because if you did, like this has way more exhaust valve area than this. And we're, we're opening this intake, this exhaust valve at 70 before bottom, and we're opening this one at 80 before bottom. We're closing this one at 15 after bottom. This one we're closing at 30 after bottom. I mean, we're closing this one at 15 after top because we got really big valves in here. We're closing at 15 after top. Over here, we're closing it at 30 after top because we got a tiny little e exhaust valve. So in order to run a tiny exhaust valve and a big intake valve, we're having to make up for it with more lift, more rocker ratio, and more camshaft timing, which you all listen to me. This right here, 630 degrees of time that the valve is open is not how you make more horsepower. We should have this goal. This should goal should go down. We need more than 70 degrees of compression time. We need more than 80 degrees for power time. We need to strive to make our two valves think it's this. We need to have 90 degrees of compression time and 95 to 100 degrees of power time. That's how you make more horsepower per cubic inch. And then the guys tell me, say, yeah, but my simulator, I got this simulator that is in the dead nuts match of what I got. My engine makes 700 horsepower, and this simulation program says if I get this airflow and this port velocity and this intake valve and this exhaust valve and this size pipe and this length steps in the pipes, and I get this compression ratio, and I got this 300 and something feet per second airflow, airspeed, I'm gonna make 700 horsepower. And then they, they pull the plug and say, case closed, I won. No, you didn't win. You just became normal. The simulation program was written by a guy that makes your engine come true. So if you did everything the simulation program said to get 700 horsepower and you did everything the program said and you got 700 horsepower, how do you get 800? How do you get 750 horsepower? If your only goal is to match the simulation, if your only goal is to find airflow velocity, if your only goal is to get a ratio between intake and exhaust valve, if your only goal is to get a bore to valve ratio and not win, and if your goal is not to make more power, if your goal is not to go faster to make more horsepower, but to meet goals by a simulation program, you're gonna get outrun. And uh, there are people on the internet right now talking about how they matched the program. They matched their goals. My goal is to make more horsepower. My goal is to have less open time on the valves. My goal is to get so much flow during this stroke. I want the intake valves to flow so much during this 180 degrees. And I want my exhaust valves to flow so much during this 180 degrees that I don't have to add all these other numbers over here to make this thing slow. Look at this, 40 before your stroke, 80 after your stroke. And if you're gonna do it on the exhaust, it's 100 before your stroke. And this one's 50 after your stroke. This is all the stroke you get. You get intake stroke, you get exhaust stroke. You get power stroke, you get compression. That's what you get. 180, 180, 180, 180 equals 720. You guys, we're running 770, 780 degrees. Somebody's getting cheated in here and it's not the exhaust valve on the opening, I mean, not the exhaust cam. This exhaust cam on the two-valve pro stocker is open for 360 degrees. Seat, 
two seed. I'm done ramping about it. I got another day, another time. I'll do some more. Thank you so much for watching you guys. I hope that didn't go over your head. It went over mine. I got to talking too fast and I lost a little bit of what I was trying to say. But if you get a chance, go back and look at it and maybe make a comment later and then I can read them later and maybe I can answer some of your questions. But look, Tech Talk 183 is a wrap. This is my second try on YouTube. This is George Bryce Star on YouTube. It's called at George Bryce Star. Please follow. Thank you. Hey, if you get a chance to subscribe, you'll get notifications and more content. Thank you very much. May God bless y'all. Good night.